This is the loci helix on page number 105. And we're looking at this specific drawing over here. And um, if you look at the instruction immediately, um, we are going to draw a square thread, right? There's going to be a shaft in the middle and the thread, which is going to be square in shape, will go around it. Uh, the incomplete front view of a single start square thread and the center of the starting position AB is given to you. Um, at the center front of the shaft as the reference on the drawing sheet. Right. Specifications, it's one and a half turn. Remember, one and a half turn. Revolution with a pitch of 60. So the pitch is 60, which is one turn, and an half turn would be 30 added to it, which makes it 90, and it's going to be 18 spaces because with one turn you have 12 and half a turn you have 6. So 12 and 6 will give you 18. It's right-handed. Uh, if it goes bottom up, then it's going to be anti-clockwise. If you stop down, it's going to be clockwise. Um, then the outside diameter, very important, is uh, 80 and the core diameter, which is the inner diameter, which is 40. Okay, and then you do must draw to a scale 1 is to 1. Let's have a look. That is what it's going to look like, basically, in 3D and 2D. So, you have to copy this given shape here, right? There they tell you, center line here, you're going to draw um, a base here, and then you draw that shape there, according to the starting position here. There's A, there's B. So, it's 20 that side, and 20 this side gives you the 40, and you have... Um, that is 20 as well from A to B or B to A. That's 20 and then there the 90 starts. Very important. The first part, this first line is actually the starting line which is 20 millimeters and then the 90 starts for the one and a half turn. You can however also start here and put the extra 20 on top. So ultimately the height is going to be 20 plus plus 90 which gives you 110 right so that is what you're going to start with faintly um, there is the given so that point from A to B would be 20 so you're going to draw a circle around it the circle on the outside remember is uh, 80 diameter and this is 40 here right that leaves us with 20 this side from year to year and 20 that side if you really calculate it. Um, that this 20 and then the 90 comes on top of this 20 that you see here. So 18 spaces will be here from there, from the top point of that A there. Right? Uh, if you say 90 divided by 18, that gives you 5 spaces. If this is 20 here, 20 divided by 5 gives you 4 spaces. That's why we have 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. And then you have your 18. So ultimately you're going to have 4 plus 18, which is 22 spaces. You are going to have in a space of 110, which is 90 plus 20. I want to make that very clear. Alright. But now you need to remember that A represents 2 points. B represents 2 points. Each one. Why am I saying that? A represents a point on the outside circle and A represents a point on the inside circle. B represents as well a point on the outside and B represents a point on. So you're going to have four points moving away. Two on the inside and two on the outside. Let's see first. There's your outside one, A. So you go from here, plot, plot. Remember, this is bottom up. Anticlockwise. That arrow should actually, this is seen from the top, but this actually goes that way. So you plot anticlockwise, like I said, from bottom up, from having a right handed, right handed, bottom up, anticlockwise. Even if that arrow shows, they say um, you must go the opposite of the top curve. Okay? So opposite of the top curve. So there you plot, 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 till there, right? So you plot here till there, that's one turn. And that's half a turn till there. And now, secondly, you plot the same point A on the inside circle here. So it's going to take a lot of construction. Right? So there is an, a figment of the first line that you 
that you plot it. You can draw it in as a faint line. Please, you must draw it in as a faint line. Right? Or track it with a faint line. Don't darken it yet. The reason how you can actually uh, make sure that your drawing is not um, being done incorrectly is to, tra to track it here that when it gets to the outside here at that point, it links up with that outside point there. That middle will specifically cross or coincide at a the center point and you will find the most outside will link up with that outside. Middle again crossing, same point, and that point will in fact meet up with that point on the outside and they will finish at the top. That's how you know that these points are plotted correctly. Okay, then we're going to go to B. You're going to plot, I've left the trace there of both. You're going to plot B on the outside. So now it becomes very busy. And you're going to end up here. Why? Because B is 20 lower, five, four blocks lower. So you're starting four blocks lower than A. So you're going to finish off at A, at B there. Right? Four blocks lower. That's on the outside. And then you're going to do one on the inside as well. Look here. Right? Once again, you can track that one there. Links up here. Goes through the middle. Right? Everything goes through the middle. And you can actually track here. That goes, that is in line with that. Through the middle, that's in line with that. And they all end up there. The green one. Right? Then, now it is time to darken. So, the first set of lines that you will darken will be that line there, look where my cursor is, that line there, connecting that point, and that line there is going to be the first lines with you. Right? And you're going to connect that line, follow it, that meets up with that side there, and this line meeting up with that point over there. Then you're going to move down, because this is half. It starts here, darken that line till there. In fact, do this line first, and do two lines, the one on top, and do another one at the bottom, right? You can see that, how that now curls, which basically means it's in front, it's going to go behind, you won't be able to see it, and it comes out in front, and it's going to go into behind, right? And this here is your shaft, so it's going to disappear somewhere here, so that line is going to be disappearing there, and it's only going to come out um, it won't even come out, it's going to come out uh, somehow um, it's going to go and stop here you won't be able to see it actually and if you if this this point is going to come out here, so let's see there we go, there it comes out that side, this is going to stop there that's also going to stop there that's going to come out in front and it's going to go and hide behind the shaft again and it's going to stop here as well um, there you can see that curve, leave the faint lines, and in fact, you will be able to see how it curls around and it, for it to finish at the back there. Okay, one turn till there, and another half a one till there. I hope that uh, makes a lot of makes sense to you. Uh, this one is, however, very tricky. And then, of course, you must fill in the shaft. The shaft blends in with that part there, that blends in with that part there, and upside down blending in with that part there. And that just goes and finishes off at the top and bottom here, that little piece there as well. I hope that this makes sense and that you will be able to manage this drawing. This is one of the more difficult um, helixes in terms of your uh, square thread that you will experience in grade 11 and grade 12. All the best with this one.